Bhagavatam ki. Shila Prabhupada ki. The only appearance of Lord Nashinga Deva ki. Go Premanande. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakya Chakshur Unmilitam Jena Tasme Shri Gurave Namaha Hare Krishna, so we welcome everyone to uh, today's celebration of the holy appearance day of Lord Narsinghadev. So in the morning we had read few teachings of uh, Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj is a great Vaishnava devotee for whom only Lord Narsinghadev appeared to protect his dear devotee. So this evening, this we will uh, look at another chapter uh, from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 7, 7, what Prahlad learned in the womb of his mother. So Narad Muni, uh, Narad Muni is actually uh, Prahlad Maharaj's spiritual master. He is the teacher of Prahlad Maharaj. So, Prahlad, so Narad Muni himself is glorifying Prahlad Maharaj and uh, giving a little bit of background how Prahlad Maharaj became a great devotee despite being the son of a demon. So we'll see what Srila Prabhupada uh, highlights as some of the lessons or teachings uh, in this uh, chapter. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 7 What Prahlad Learned in the Womb, Text Number 1 so, Narad Muni is saying, Shri Narad Vacha Evam Daitya Sute Prishto Mahabhagvato Suraha Uvachatan Smayamanaha Smaran Mad Anu Bhashitam. Narad Muni said, Although Prahlad Maharaj was born in a family of Asuras, he was the greatest of all devotees. Having thus been questioned by his class friends, the sons of the Asuras, he remembered the words spoken to him by me and replied to his friends as follows. So Naraji is telling that uh, Pralad is telling his classmates a little bit of his own background. Because Pralad Maharaj, uh, all his classmates are all children of demons. Uh, so all the children are asking Pralad Maharaj, you know, you are also the son of a demon, and you are the son of the greatest demon, who is the leader of the demons. And yet, you are speaking Krishna consciousness, and this is new subject matter to us. We have never heard this. So then Prahlad Maharaj uh, shares this, recollects this incident of his, and he says that when our father, Hinna Kashipu, went to the uh, Mandrachal mountain uh, to execute Severe austerities. He did very severe austerities. For what? He wanted to become uh, eternal. Not realizing, not realizing that the nature of the soul itself is eternal. He was eternal anyway, but he wanted to become immortal uh, in, in that sense. So, Prahlad Maharaj is saying that when uh, his father was away performing severe austerities, the demigods, the devatas, they actually became fearful of Hinakashipu. So, Hinakashipu, when he was away, the, the demigods decided to uh, kidnap his mother, Kayadu. Prahlad is saying they decided to kidnap my mother. And the reason behind their decision to kidnap was, they were saying that, you know, if Hinakashipu is such a big demon, uh, what do we speak of? His son. Hindi mein kehte na, baap nambari, beta? Das nambari. So the demigods were already fearful of this. So they decided to kidnap Kayadu. And as soon as Kayadu would give birth, 
they would kill the child. So the demigods headed by Indra, they came and they kidnapped Kayadu. So when they were taking Kayadu on, on the way, they met Narad. Narad Muni is saying, you know, to Indra, Hello Indra, what are you doing? You are the king of heaven. You are the king of heaven, yet you choose to kidnap Hinna Kashipu's wife when Hinna Kashipu is not there. If anybody is really heroic, then you should go and fight a battle. But you know, you are doing a very coward, cowardly act. So, uh, Kayadu was very, very afraid by the act of the demigods. So, Narad Muni gave shelter. Narad Muni assured that, please don't worry. You know, until your husband returns, you stay uh, in my ashram, in Govardhan. You know, there's a place in Vindavan, uh, Narad uh, one. Uh, so, you stay in the ashram of Narad Muni. And he said, when your husband returns from the tapasya, then you can. So while she was staying there, Prahlad Maharaj is saying that when my mother and I, uh, I in the womb of my mother, so Prahlad is not born yet, so he was still in the womb of his mother, and uh, Narad Muni, being the ashram, ashram means wherever there is a recital of Srimad Bhagavatam. I mentioned in the morning as well. Huh? Srimad Bhagavatam is the glory of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Huh? So Narad Muni was uh, reciting Srimad Bhagavatam in his ashram. So Kayadu was there in the ashram. So while she was staying in the ashram, again Srila Prabhupada says here, yeah, the point comes back uh, that uh, when she was staying in the ashram, she rendered some service. Huh? Parlad Mara said, Narad Muni delivered his instructions both to me who was within the womb and to my mother who was engaged in rendering him service. This is another good point here that we may be hearing Krishna Katha. You may hear about the transcendental glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But in order to have a very quick and effective impact of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, there should be service attitude. Srimad Bhagavad Gita says, Tad vidhi pranipatena pari prashnena sevaya upadakshanti te jnanam jnaninas tattva darshina. The self-realized soul, they impart knowledge to one who is surrendered. And how do you know when one is surrendered? One renders some service. When you are surrendered, then you render some service. So here, this is uh, many times we may have heard that, you know, uh, Kayadu was there, Srimad Bhagavatam was being recited, and she heard. But here, this point is, uh, Prahlad Maharaj is saying that not only she heard, she rendered some service. Uh, then it multiplies the impact of uh, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Because he naturally, extremely, he is naturally extremely kind to the fallen souls, being in a transcendental position, he gave instructions on religion and transcendental knowledge. These instructions were free from material contamination. Actually, Srila Prabhupada says that even at the point when Indra came to kidnap uh, uh, Kayadu, Narak Muni already told Indra that the child in the womb of Kayadu is a great devotee. So you will not be able to kill him anyway. But here we are also seeing from, uh, learning from Prahlad Maharaj himself that he said, you know, I heard the recital of Srimad Bhagavatam uh, from Narad Muni. So what my question, then how did, how was it that Narad Muni declared that Prahlad was already a devotee? So, there is two points. Acharya says there is two points to be considered. One is definitely being part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Each and everyone is a devotee. Mm -hmm. Not only human beings, all living entities are part and parcel of Krishna and therefore everyone is a devotee. It's just a matter of time 
that the devotion, the love for Godhead manifests in, in one's heart and when the devotion manifests in the heart, we engage in the service of Sri Krishna. And the Acharyas also make a commentary with reference to Narsingha Puran. In the Narsingha Puran, it is said that Hinda Kashyabu went to perform austerities many times, but he was not able to successfully complete it. So one time, Hinda Kashyabu went to perform austerities and he went into a cave to perform austerity. So whilst he was doing this, in the cave, there was a parrot also. So when Hinda Kashyabu sat in you know, meditation, trying to meditate on Lord Brahma, this parrot in the cave continued to recite Om Namo Narayana. This parrot was reciting like this. So when this parrot was reciting like this, every time Hinda Kashyabu is trying to focus his mind on Brahmaji, he is hearing takes his mind on Narayana. That is why Acharya said, it is said in Harinam Chintamani, sometimes we want to ask, sometimes we may ask, Prabhuji, how do I perform quality chanting? My Guru Maharaj used to say, the best quality chanting is, chant loud enough to hear yourself. Every word in the chanting you say, you must be able to hear it. As soon as you are skipping, Words, you are not hearing them, that means your chanting is not good. It's not good. So it is very important. It is very nice amongst the devotees, you know, there will be kirtan happenings or somebody else's. That is why it is also important that we should chant with the devotees. That is the reason why Prabhupada, when he set up the sadhana system, how we perform sadhana bhakti, we do mangalarti, then we do Tulsi Puja, then we recite the Shishrastakam, you know, it creates the right mood uh, of surrender to Krishna. And then with the devotees, we chant together. Uh, that is why Prabhupada said, we have a Japa time. Japa time. So, this way, Hinda Kashyabu was hearing this recitation of the parrot, Om Namo Narayana, and his mind continued to uh, go to Narayana. And the more he heard Narayana, the more he became angry because he was considering Lord Vishnu to be his enemy. Why did he consider Lord Vishnu to be enemy? Because he had killed, uh, Krishna appeared, Lord Narayana appeared as in the boy incarnation and killed his brother Hiran Yaksha. Uh, Hiran Yaksha. So that way he considered Lord Vishnu to be his enemy. But nevertheless, he, when he heard this, he became more and more angry and then he left the tapasya, the austerity he was undergoing and he went back to his kingdom. So when he went back to his kingdom, we can say he was being haunted. <laughs> he was haunted by Om Namo Narayana. <laughs> Just like Prabhupada said, if I were to say, don't think of color red, what comes to your mind? <laughs> so the more, the more he did not want to think of Narayan, the more he thought of Narayan. But of course, you know, let's not follow the example of Hina Kashyabu. We say, you know, we will not chant, but we will hate Krishna, you know, we will not like Krishna, and, you know. Kamsa also, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, somebody may comment, you know, Kamsa was more Krishna conscious than us. Kamsa was seeing Krishna everywhere. Anywhere and everywhere is looking, he's seeing Krishna. But he was seeing Krishna in the form of death, uh, enemy, in, in fear. Hmm? That is why sometimes in religion also, in belief systems also, there are some descriptions of, you know, some, some fear is created so that people surrender unto Krishna. But Krishna consciousness is not about that. Krishna consciousness is about loving Krishna. Rupa Goswami says, you know, if we think like Kamsa, uh, we will not go back home, back to Godhead, to Golok Vrindavan. We need to think of Krishna in the mood of the gopis. But nevertheless, Hirana Kashivu came back home. Uh, he was sort of being haunted by Namo Narayana every, everywhere and always it's in his mind, you know, the more he does not want to think about Narayan, the more he thinks about Narayan. So in that due course, Hirana uh, uh, Kashivu uh, 
uh, you know, whilst he was in his palace, he had an association with his wife, and therefore Kayadu became pregnant. And when Kayadu became pregnant, actually, Hinna Kashipu already had Narayan in his mind. So when you do any activity, uh, remembering Krishna, Krishna becomes present. Uh, Krishna becomes present. And therefore, great soul Prala uh, became present in the womb of Kayadu. So, these are the two reasons uh, why Narad Muni had already declared that Prahlad was a great devotee and therefore the demigods, uh, especially Indra, who was the most fearful of his seat uh, and that's why he was wanting to get rid of Prahlad. So Prahlad said, uh, however, when we were both in Narad Muni's ashram, we both heard the transcendental sound vibration. We heard the recitation of Srimad Bhagavan. That is why, uh, when it was questioned at the end of Dwapar Yuga, when Krishna had returned, when Krishna has returned to Golok Vrindavan Dham, this question was raised by the sages, where did Dharma go? Uh, where did Dharma go? Dharma means uh, compassion, uh, austerity, truthfulness. Uh, all these are considered Dharma. Dharma does not mean, Dharma means duty. What is the duty of the spirit soul? Jivera Swarupa Hai, Nityara, Krishna, Das. To be always servant of Krishna. So where did Dharma go? Dharma, it is said uh, in the very beginning, the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, just you know, before the introduction in, in the beginning pages, it is stated that when Krishna left, Dharma took shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam. That is why in today's world you will see there is no other scripture that makes impact on people's lives in terms of spiritual advancement or spiritual progress. There is no scripture better than Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is said to be the uh, Amala Puran, spotless Puran. All the other scriptures, just a while ago I was discussing with a devotee here at the back, that all the other scriptures, they teach us attraction to Krishna, but with some tinge of material benefit. Why do we want to do things in our life? Why do we want to pray? You know, we offer some prayers, we offer some flowers, we offer some incense, we do all these things, we do some puja. Or why are we, you know, a little bit religious in our life? Because we want some material benefit. Eh? Material benefit. Eh? We take a breath, you know, uh, to Krishna, or for that matter, you know, any demigod, or you do some religious activity, you know, I get my uh, green card, you know, I'll offer a feast in the temple. <laughs> eh? I get relief of this disease, or I get this job, you know, I'm going for this interview. So you are wanting all material things. But Srimad Bhagavatam is talking about devotional service, pure devotional service, love of Krishna. Uh, those of you who have some knowledge about farming, uh, you know, uh, we all like sugar. So sugar comes from sugar cane. Uh, so when you do sugar cane, you need to uh, have a milling plant to take out sugar, to extract sugar from sugar cane. So, when the sugar mill is constructed, you construct the mill for extracting sugar. But when you, in the process of extracting sugar, you also get the byproduct, which is called molasses. So, sugar cane farmers, they don't do a mill for molasses. Molasses is a byproduct. It automatically comes. You do the construction for sugar. So similarly, when we do devotional service to Krishna, you just simply have to love Krishna and every other thing comes by on its own. You don't have to make a separate endeavor for these things. Krishna will give it himself. We just have to remain Krishna 
conscious. So how do you remain Krishna conscious? Prahlad Maharaj himself said, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam. Huh? Shravanam. The first and foremost devotional activity is to hear about Krishna and Krishna's devotee. If you hear about Krishna only, you might understand that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But that still doesn't have real impact on you. That is why you look at Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is about devotees. This is tested and proven process of Krishna consciousness. Today, we are seeing the proof of Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj. Another very good point uh, Acharya says that we can also learn from this that no matter which yuga you are in, whatever process is being followed, just like in, in Sat Yuga, you know, there is meditation. How do you attain love for Krishna? Through meditation. But how do you do meditation? It is not that simply you uh, uh, sit in a lotus position in a Padma Asan, close your eyes and think of nothing. Huh? You see, even when the great, great rishis have gone into meditation, huh? even here example of Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj always chanting the Dvadash Aksha Mantra. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So in Satyuga, the via medium is meditation. But Krishna's name has to be recited. Without recitation of Krishna's name, it is not meditation. Similarly, in Treta Yuga, in Treta Yuga, the via medium of Krishna consciousness or spirituality is Havan Jagya, just like we had a Havan Jagya huh? a while ago. So that's the via medium. Huh? That's how you engage your senses into spiritual path. But you must all have noticed, you must have all noticed that while Dwarakadish Prabhu was conducting the Jagya, he was reciting the various names of Krishna. Eh? Various names of Krishna. Eh? It wasn't simply, you know, we set up fire and everyone is quiet, it's pin drop silence, and we are just throwing some grains in the fire. That's not Jagya. It has to be Om Narsinghai Namaswaha, Om Govinda Namaswaha, you know, the discipline succession. So you have to recite the holy names. Similarly, in Dwapar Yuga, the Yuga Dharma is establishing deities and temples and worshipping the deities. So Srila Prabhupada said, even whilst worshipping the deities, even whilst worshipping the deities, we have to call upon Krishna. Uh, we may be waving incense, ringing the bell, but that does not make arti. What makes arti? The kirtan that's going on. Uh, that is why Prabhupada said, you know, when arti is happening, uh, generally we say, arti happens for about 15-20 minutes. How did Prabhupada say, you know, arti should happen 15-20 to 20 minutes? Because Prabhupada said, uh, the kirtan, whilst the arti is happening, kirtan should go for 15-20 minutes. So all the time, you know, sometimes we say, let us have a silent arti. There's nothing such as a silent arti. Arti means there's chanting of kirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And of course, in present day and age, it is chanting the holy names of Krishna himself. Kalotad Dharit Kirtana. So, Sukhdev Goswami very nicely says, Kaler Dosha Nidhe Rajan Astihi Eko Mahan Guna. This present day and age is full of faults. Full of faults. Anything you attempt to do, there is defect. You try to meditate, your mind goes. If you're, if you're, if you're wanting to sit in meditation, you cannot. Because in present day and age, in present times, you know, Kali has reincarnated. Huh? Kali has reincarnated. He has come again. Huh? Anyone can say, 
what is kali's incarnation in present day huh? no kali kali's incarnation kali's incarnation i said kali huh? the age of kali has reincarnated in present day what it is reincarnation Huh? Of course, there is coral and hypocrisy. But how has he reincarnated? He has reincarnated in the form of Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> What is Kali supposed to do? Divert your attention from Krishna. <laughs> huh? Krishna, divert your attention from Krishna. Huh? It's very nice. You hear some nice lectures on the YouTube, you know, you, you know, on your Facebook. But you know, the artificial intelligence that you know Facebook uses. You know, once you are here, you heard one lecture, you heard the second lecture. There's something going to pop up. <laughs> you click on that. The artificial intelligence programming will align more. <laughs> Look at this uh, reincarnation of Kalju. Huh? The mobile phones. Huh? The whole family is sitting on the dinner table. Everyone is looking at their own mobile. Huh? So there is so much distraction. Even you know sometimes you are performing arti in your home, and your mobile goes ting. Huh? For one moment you feel like stopping the arti and looking at you know, who messaged me. <laughs> Uh, we see, you know, so many people, you know, in this, you know, current times, you know, people are all getting depressed. You know, this happened in, in, in this happened in Fiji. One incident happened in Fiji. So there was this young boy, high school kid. You know, he had a Facebook account. You know, he posted something, and he was expecting that you know there will be so many likes of his posting, and unfortunately, there were no likes for his posting. And this high school boy, he committed suicide. This is driving people crazy. Huh? That's driving people crazy. It is good. You know, you have your Shrimad Bhagavatam in your mobile. Huh? So you can read your Shrimad Bhagavatam in the mobile. But the problem is, your messenger will get some message, your Viper will get some message, your WhatsApp will get some message. So whilst you are reading the Bhagavatam, you'll just scroll down to see what the message is. Maybe something urgent. Huh? Something urgent. What can be more urgent than Krishna consciousness? Huh? That is why. That is one reason why you need to have Shrimad Bhagavatam. When you read Shrimad Bhagavatam, take the book in your hand and read for few minutes. Huh? You will have a focused learning because with the Bhagavatam, no WhatsApp messages comes on this. Huh? So mind doesn't get. Diverted. Huh? So, Prahlad Maharaj says, you know, it is important that we hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Huh? And hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, now hearing other scriptures versus Srimad Bhagavatam. The difference of hearing other scriptures, there are so many other scriptures, they're all part of Vedic literature, but the difference between hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and other scriptures is that Srimad Bhagavatam strongly establishes the loving devotional service in the heart. Hmm? Other scriptures are just shallow. Huh? You become attracted, but then something else can attract you. Huh? You read this, you read something else, then you feel, you know, this is lower, you know, I can go on to something higher. But Srimad Bhagavatam is the conclusion. It is the ripened fruit of the Vedic literatures. So that is why when you hear Srimad Bhagavatam, it is totally established in the heart. So, uh, before we have the Aarti, just want to say that you know, there is a Srimad Bhagavatam set on the altar and somebody has to take it to death. Huh? Somebody has to take it to death. If anyone is interested in establishing, firmly establishing Krishna consciousness in their own heart, please take the Srimad Bhagavatam to death. You can contact Atmaram Prabhu or the gift from Hare Krishna. Lord Shri Narasimha Deva Ki, Shri Prabhupada Ki, Ananda Kodi Vaishnava Vrinda Ki, Nitai Gopya Manande.